It will assist the conduct of business if participants speak only when invited. I shall adjourn the meeting if necessary or if protocol is not observed. Members of the public are welcome to view the proceedings, but should not make any contributions during the decision making process. All members of the committee have received the reports in advance and had the opportunity to read them. The reports are published on the internet. Additional documents known as the pre-committee notes are available on the Council's internet site and have been emailed to members and public speakers. These should be read in conjunction with the main agenda documents. So they are fully taken into account before decisions are made. <coughs> Applications will be dealt with in the order they appear on the agenda and I will invite applicants, agents and public speakers who have registered to speak at the appropriate times. All speakers must ensure that they do not run over the three minute time limit. There will be no questioning by committee of objectors, supporters, applicants or agents who will not be able to speak again. <coughs> All participants should mute their microphones and video feed when they are not speaking. Please remember to unmute your microphone and switch on your video feed when it is your turn to speak. Speak clearly and slowly into your microphone. The chat function on the Microsoft Teams should only be used by the members of the committee and officers. This is to assist me with the conduct of the meeting. Members of the public should not use this function in any capacity. This is being monitored and as a full audit trail. Anyone found to be using this function will be removed from the meeting. If there are registers, registered speakers to speak on an application, the officers will present the report. Registered speakers will be invited to make representations one at a time. Members of the committee will be asked if they want to speak on the application. If there are no registered speakers on an application, the officers will be asked if they have anything further to add. Members of the committee will be asked if they want to speak on the application or if it is to be moved straight to a decision. The committee will then be invited to make a decision on any, each individual application. When a matter is put to a formal vote, I will ask each member of the committee individually to record their vote using the chat function or against or abstain. Finally, I ask for everyone's patience with the use of technology. I apologise in advance if we experience any unforeseen difficulties which we will try to resolve expediently. All right. Are there any apologies for absence? Yes, Chair, Councillor Andrea Goddard. Thank you. Um, are there any uh, substitute members for this committee? Yes, Chair, Councillor Sean Casey for Councillor Andrea Goddard. Okay. Thank you. Uh, to, to receive any declarations of interest under the Members' Code of Conduct. Councillor Taylor. Yes, Chair. The first item is within my ward, uh, and I just want to make that plain. I have no interest in it, no pecuniary interest in it, but I just want to make it plain that it is in, within my ward. OK. That's fine. That's fine. No problem. Uh, to confirm and sign the minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of April 2021 as a correct record. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Right, plans and applications to develop. Now, this afternoon we had a site visit on an application that we did um, determine on the 12th of April and uh, three uh, councillors uh, came to the site visit. So it does make it chorus. We, we, we can decide on it tonight. Uh, so that application number was uh, P21-0057 and it was uh, Vic Vicarage Road West, Woodsetton, and it was for the ground floor extension to a shop, first floor extension to existing flat above. Now I must stress to committee that this is this application and the determination and decision is only for three councillors, that's myself, Councillor Neil and Councillor Kesey. Uh, I'd like to bring Helen in, please. Thank you, Chair. 
Um, just to say that I was also present on the site visit representing the council as the council officer today. So I'm just going to flick through some photographs that were presented to members of the public and elected members um, at the last committee, just to remind everyone of the site that was visited today. So this was 60 Vicarage Road West, Wood Seton. So this is an aerial view of the site here marked with the pin. This is a, a residential unit at first floor and a shop at ground floor with residential units either side. This site plan outlines the area where the extension would be located. This footprint shows the area for the ground floor, but there would be an element of first floor above also. This shows the existing rear elevation of the site. This external staircase would be removed and replaced with an extension that's located approximately within the area of this slightly raised patio. This is a view of the rear staircase up to the existing access to the first floor residential accommodation. This view shows the rear of number 61, which is adjacent to the application site, which is shown here on the right hand side. And a view showing the relationship of number 61 with the application site number 60. This shot shows number 58 or the bungalow, which is located to the north of the application site located here, which has a single storey rear extension present and you can see is angled towards the application site. This is an aerial view that catches all three of the rear elevations, showing both neighbouring residential properties and the application site centrally here. Another view looking in a northerly direction, showing the application site and the bungalow there, number 58 to the north. And the final view showing all three rear elevations within the line upon Vicarage Road West. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Helen. Um, I'd like to put it to uh, Councillor Casey and Councillor Neil. Are there any comments or questions on this? Councillor Neil. Uh, yes, when I actually asked for the site visit, I think it was a good idea. Um, and I think from the site visit, it's been a good gauge of how the lay of the land is as such. And in my opinion, um, the new extension will dwarf both buildings either side of it. And I think that was really good that we actually had the site visit. Um, so yes, Chair, I'm ready to go to the vote. Right. Thank you, Councillor Neil. If there are no other comments, questions I will go to the vote. Um, I will say a couple of words first as well. Uh, obviously I attended the site visit and it, it was a good idea to go and have a look. Um, I must admit I, I can see that the, uh, the agents worked really well to try and get some a decent extension there but in my own personal view I think it is a little bit over development and I think um, if, if it was approved uh, the, the uh, loss for the uh, the bungalow so um i will go to the vote now this vote is only for councillor kesey councillor neil and the vote is to approve or refuse so this is application p21 0057 vicarage road west approve or refuse uh, councillor neil refuse chair councillor kesey I refuse, Chair. My vote. I also vote to refuse. Uh, so that application is refused. Um, to you, Chair, could I uh, please request some reasons for refusal for that application? Um, yes. yes, of course. Uh, I would think that uh, I think under design and appearance, I think uh, regards to the, the overbearing scale of the development, I think um, residential amenity, loss of light um, to the uh, to the bungalow, um, if it had been approved, approved. and uh, there were some privacy issues as well uh, overlooking. Uh, so is it, is that all right? Is that okay? That's fine, Chair. Um, if any if any of the other members got anything they'd like to add to that before we uh, proceed, Chair, if it's okay with you, um, yeah. I'd just like to add that, especially in terms of the bungalow, um, as we're looking at the back of the property, the, the, the bungalow to the right. I note from the site visit that there's already a brick structure uh, in the rear area. 
uh, of the proposed uh, site for extension. And if this uh, extension was granted, uh, because the bungalow is set down, so it's lower and its garden is lower, for most of the length of its garden, it would have a, a brick wall um, at a greater height than the existing wooden fence. And to me, that was one of the reasons why I think that the uh, the application is um, uh, has been unsuccessful. It is, a, in my opinion, a, a hugely overbearing extension. Um, uh, in in that particular area. So thank you, Chair. No, that's, thank you, thank you, Councillor Kesey. Right, uh, moving on then. This is a uh, planning application number P twenty one four seven zero. It's uh, land adjacent and opposite to number seventeen Four Draft Street in Cradley Elzowin. Um, it's an erection of one number bungalow and ten dwelling houses. With associated, with associated highway works and parking. Right. Uh, I'd like to bring Peter in on this one, if that's OK. OK, um, thank you, Chair. This is uh, application site. It's split in uh, into two parts. Uh, the part to the um, to the south of, uh, of Four Draft Street um, is a grass amenity um, area. Um, the areas to the north of, uh, of Four Draft Street um, is uh, what was public open space and a an area of, uh, of car parking that is owned by the uh, the council. Um, if we go to the next slide, please. Um, this is the uh, current uh, application plan. It proposes the erection of one bungalow. Off, uh, off Highfield Road um, and uh, 10 houses, um, two of which would be on Highfield Road, um, the rest onto, uh, onto Four Draft Street. Now, the application has developed over time. Um, originally, the application was submitted with a number of apartments proposed on the site to uh, the north of Four Draft Street, um, which drew um, Quite considerable objection from uh, local residents and uh, and members, and resulted in um, a consultation uh, event with our housing officers that uh, sort of concluded the apartments ought to be removed and the um, and substituted by houses certainly to Four Draft Street. Our own highways officers uh, were concerned that the access. Um, onto Four Draft Street, uh, and particularly from Four Draft Street, is very limited when uh, you uh, consider access up to Windmill. It's a very busy road, and there's very little visibility at that point. They therefore wanted a new access road to be provided from Highfield Road um, up to Four Draft Street, and a requirement that the uh, frontage of the application site on Four Draft Street be um, adopted to um, a, a, a highway standard. Um, currently, it's uh, it's only adopted to a footway and cycleway standard, and therefore the carriageways is uh, is quite um, inadequate. Um, in terms of the um, the application that's uh, uh, resulted. Uh, because there is uh, a parking area on part of the uh, Four Draft Street uh, frontage, um, an informal area that kind of serves the um, the local centre of uh, of, uh, of Windmill Hill. Um, there are other parking areas available in Windmill Hill, which I'll uh, get to later. Um, the informal area that's on Four Draft Street would be removed, but there are four additional um, replacement car parking spaces proposed to the uh, rear of, uh, I think, Plot 2 uh, on Highfields Road. That would be generally available for uh, members of the public to, um, to use. Additionally, because the area of land on which they uh, houses north of Four Draft Street the cited is um, partly um, open space. It's owned by the council. Um, we sought 
to replace, uh, at least provide replacement for the uh, grassed area on Highfields Road with a, um, a footpath link and an enhanced uh, open space area um, to the north. Uh, the footpath would have given, um, would give access to that site. Um, it would be also um, lit by virtue of the condition uh, that's um, attached to the draft uh, report uh, on the basis that it's appropriate to reprovide any loss uh, and it, on the basis also that uh, uh, easier pedestrian uh, passage through uh, open space gives better surveillance and um, can uh, at least address concerns of, uh, of antisocial behaviour. Okay. Um, could I, if I can go to the next slide then, it will give a little more uh, context. This is the um, proposed um, development um, as uh, would be seen from uh, uh, Highfield Road with the new link road um, going up to Four Draft Street. Um, next slide, please. This would um, show uh, Four Draft Street, the uh, additional uh, plots with their own um, car parking. All the units have appropriate um, car parking um, within the plots. Uh, all have appropriate gardens and uh, none of the uh, proposed development is considered to have an adverse effect on any of the existing uh, residential dwellings uh, in the vicinity of the, uh, of the site. Um, can we go to the next um, aerial view? Yeah, so this indicates the uh, the two split sites. You'll notice uh, from the um, the lower um, slide, there's a uh, there is a a path. The site it's clearly visible in a diagonal route. There's also additional uh, footpath link uh, on that southern site. Uh, those um, footpaths would need to be closed and diverted. Uh, there is provision within the uh, the application. Uh, for that to take place. Uh, there's a second recommendation uh, that addresses that, uh, that issue. You'll note that there's quite a number of trees indicated to the uh, the northern um, site. Those have been assessed by our, uh, our tree uh, officers. They've been found to be very over mature and therefore have limited life and uh, there are of uh, a limited value and there's no objection raised to the uh, to the loss of those uh, of those trees. Um, there's also conditions re uh, attached within the uh, proposals that would give um, enhancements to the open space to the um, north of the proposed houses um, and some mitigation uh, on that basis. We go through the uh, the rest of the um, the. the Site photos, please. Next one. Okay. Th this, yeah, th this indicates the um, southern um, part of the site, showing more clearly the um, the footpath linked to Four Draft Street from Highfield. You can see the um, parking area um, to the north of uh, of Four Draft Street, which is separate to the um, the parking area at the back of the uh, shops themselves. I think maybe uh, the previous slide, aerial slide, shows an alternative car parking um, um, location within uh, Windmill Hill. Yeah, uh, to the extreme left of the uh, of the slide, um, on the opposite side of the road, um, um, just to the south. That's it. Uh, there's a car parking area, public car park that does front the uh, the Methodist Church uh, public car park uh, that could serve as an alternative additional um, parking space given the uh, loss of the informal uh, parking area on uh, on Four Draft Street. Okay, uh, I think we can go to the rest of the slides then. Um, so this is the uh, application site. Um, site notice has been um, posted in addition to the, um, the notices referring to the, uh, the development of the houses. This notice specifically relates to uh, 
um, the impact upon the uh, upon the footpaths. Uh, there's still a period of um, of consultation to um, uh, run down on that uh, on that site analysis, which I'll, I'll refer to in the uh, pre-committee notes as well. You can see the um, almost blank flank wall of the adjacent property on Highfields Road, which we don't consider will be adversely impacted upon by the uh, proposed new dwellings. Uh, okay, next slide. Okay, this is um, showing the uh, the link through the grass amenity space where the new um, uh, road link will be uh, will be positioned. This is looking back towards um, Highfields Road. Next one, please. Uh, Fordraft Street, just beyond the uh, application site, Fordraft Street has been uh, subject to uh, to closure, basically because of the uh, poor quality of the highway and also because of the poor um, visibility and unsafe arrangements at the uh, at the junction. So currently, it's bollarded off. It will be uh, it will remain um, bollarded off, so that there'll be no through traffic um, from. Highgate to um, uh, Bordeaux Street beyond the bars. Okay, next slide, please. This is looking back um, along Fordraft Street. You can see the area of parking that will be uh, removed by the developments. Um, there's also parking in the background at the rear of the um, shops uh, on Windmill Hill, um, which have got their own sort of private area immediately to the uh, to the rear. The next slide, please. OK, it's more of a, a close of the parking area, the site frontage. You're starting to see the state of the carriageway uh, on Fordraft Street, which um, is not maintained to, uh, to highway standards. OK, next slide, please. OK, uh, so looking north, um, across the application site um, adjacent to 17 Fordraft Street. The, the site slopes down to the north um, quite steeply. Uh, this does um, enable the rear of the, um, of the gardens of the proposed houses to be elevated above the open space and that can uh, provide for a more secure uh, rear boundary. Uh, that was one of the considerations that uh, Officers looked at in the um, in the progress and uh, assessment of the planning application. Next slide, please. And looking across the, uh, the site, there's been some um, tree clearance that uh, was appropriate, I think, given the length of time applications been in and the uh, over maturity of a number of the trees, which. Um, were getting to a state where they were no longer um, safe or uh, or viable. Uh, next slide, please. OK, um, again, looking from Fordraft Street um, towards the um, amenity space that would remain, there would be trees remaining on the uh, on the lower section of that uh, of that space. OK, next one, please. OK, well, that's that's the uh, the end of the, uh, the photographic presentation. I would refer to the uh, the pre-committee notes if I, if I may, Chair. The, um, they are available for all members, but uh, there are a few um, additional points in there uh, relating to the, uh, the site notice um, because comments uh, could be received on that site notice until the uh, until the 7th of May. Uh, it's recommended that uh, should the application be uh, uh, recommended for approval, uh, that approval is delegated to the, um, to the director of, uh, of place, subject to no uh, additional objections being raised, uh, giving new material planning considerations uh, within the consultation period. Um, there's also slightly revised recommendation for the closure of the uh, existing right of way and the uh, bringing up um, to an adoptable standard of uh, four draft street fronting the uh, the application site. 
Uh, slightly revised condition three because we are now happy with materials. Um, new condition 24 relating to the construction of the uh, of the highway and a new condition 25 requiring uh, planning and management and maintenance um, scheme for the open space to the rear the north of the uh, proposed houses on four draft streets okay thank you chair thank you Pete. thank you Pete. right um, right. um I just want to inform want me that we have uh, three speakers on this application uh, could I call on our first speaker please could I call on councillor partridge Thank you, Chair. Um, members of the committee, I'm here this evening to ask that you use the powers that you have to gate the community garden and footpath by conditioning approval to ensure that the potential for antisocial behaviour is eliminated or at the very least reduced. Um, the report before you this evening shows massive localised concern about the potential of the garden, of the garden and the pathway in terms of cause, causing harm. Concerns which are supported by written witness accounts and statements that uh, form part of the report this evening. Members, it said that the best way to predict the future is to repeat the mistakes of the past. And in opening up this area, we will be doing just that. This space could easily become a source of community angst, which in turn will drain police and council resources that ultimately will result in this area having to be closed again. In looking at drawing 191101, you can see that there is no topographical detail, which effectively means this location could be read as being flat. In fact, the site for the pathway and the community garden is on sloping land. It's part of Windmill Hill, which many of you will know and love as the A458. This hill is unashamedly steep, and it's one of the highest points in the borough. Various elevations are at play here, and you will have heard the officer um, refer to the different, different levels, meaning it slopes from left to right, top to bottom and in between, um, all of which is accommodated at the midpoint of the path by steps. For sure, this area does share a boundary with um, 18 existing properties, but it is only overlooked by one, and that is in part. So there's no real natural surveillance here, and I believe that that is a problem. The pathway does not provide a convenient shortcut or better access than the alternatives, and the garden is not better in terms of amenity than the Bernard Oakley Park, or indeed the grassed area, which provides seating between Talbot Street and Windmill Hill. Chair, as a community, we actually consider this Brownfield site development to be good, not perfect, as we would have had more car parking and feature rewilding in the green space, but it's not bad, which is why it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge that. Officers have responded to concerns constructively and respectfully, and the application before you benefits from that. It is also fair to say that these officers have improved levels of trust and confidence in the council as a whole, and for that, they absolutely should be commended. But, and coming back to the path and the garden, if this development is approved with open access and no gating, we will once again repeat the mistakes of the past. And that would be its own particular tragedy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Partridge. Um, I'd like to call on our second speaker, please. Uh, Mr. Morris. Okay, okay, thank you, Chair. There are still some outstanding issues. The major one being the plan reopening of a walkway which leads from Forge Street to Talbot Street. A communal garden is also planned to the rear of the site. This walkway was closed 20 years ago due to antisocial behaviour. What has changed since then? I and many others would say antisocial and related crimes have intensified many times over and crazily. The area to the rear of the post office on Windmill Hill has been and continues to be blighted with antisocial behaviour drug dealing, drug taking, alcohol consumption, littering and graffiti. Over the years, numerous contacts have been made to the police by myself and others. Nothing has changed on this location. A lead planning officer on his first meeting on site with us witnessed the drug deal at first hand. In the proposal, there is a small loss of green area which runs between Ifield Road and Forge Street. 
This area is designated as a brownfield site on Dudley's own website and therefore does not need any log for log replacement. Bernard Opie Park is also a two minute walkway. If the walkway is closed, some of this area will be much better used for extra parking for local shops and businesses. There will be a significant loss of parking availability due to this proposal. I would now like to quote some very apt words. The local planning authorities must ensure their policies and decisions aim to create a safe environment where crime and disorder and the fear of crime do not undermine quality of life or community cohesion. These words are taken from the planning department's own guidelines. The communal garden is a dream, which will very quickly become a nightmare and a no-go area for the people of Cradley. Finally, I would like to bring to the attention of the committee members of a meeting I had with a local resident on Monday the 19th of April. Mrs. Kate Canada lives with her eight-year-old daughter in a small flat. Her only outdoor space is a small balcony. This balcony overlooks the area to the rear of the post office on Wimmillow and will also overlook the Banbury Open walkway in its garden. She told me at great length what she and her young daughter witness on a daily basis. It was all there from drug dealing to antisocial behaviour. And her last words to me were, it's out. Common sense says no to the reopening of this walkway. The residents of Craigie say no. Sam, the postmaster, and Wendy Will says no. All our local councillors, including Simon Phipps, say no. Rodley's public trust of way officer says no. Katie Kennedy and her daughter say no. The final word on this will come from the members of this committee and should and must be a tiny but powerful. Sorry, word. Chair. Uh, that word is no. Thank you, Mr. Morris. All right, thank you. Um, can I call on our last speaker, please, Mr. Bedard? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, everyone. Firstly, I would like to echo the words of Councillor Partridge on the consultation process and how we have tried to work together in a positive manner to best meet the needs for the local community on this potential development. Ultimately, Fordraft Street needs some kind of development. Dudley, like the majority of boroughs in the country, needs new affordable housing options, and this site provides us with a great opportunity to improve the area, address long-standing issues, and provide much needed affordable housing. We will provide quality affordable homes which tie in with the local area in terms of neighbouring properties and appearance and that meet local needs. We believe our track record of past developments confirms this. The consultation process has been a big positive from our point of view and we have listened to local opinion and changed the original proposal as a result of that. However, these changes have put us right on the limit of financial viability of what we can deliver, but the changes from the original scheme have been listened to local views do us, in our view, provide a better scheme with the local area, and we are grateful for that assistance. However, the loss of 10 units does have a big, uh, a big impact on our cost modelling. From a housing point of view, we were unable to reduce the scale of the development any further, and whilst we recognise it may not hit every objective, from our consultation, we are confident that it is the best possible scheme we can deliver on this site and the only feasible offer. Historically, this site has been unviable for developers to build on, hence why it continues to sit empty and provide nuisance for the local community. If planning is successful, we plan to engage with local stakeholders where possible to reassure and aid where we can to deliver the best development possible. Parking is an issue and this is recognised. However, we are creating four spaces within the development and will be willing to work with the existing shops to identify parking spaces, i.e. providing white lines this will help the shops maximise their existing parking facility. We are also looking at the improvement of Fordraft Street itself in terms of the actual poor condition of the highway, which we will discuss with highways in terms of linking our scheme to the junction on Windmill Hill. Also, so far as we are able, we will look to work with the local community to try to address concerns over potentially troublesome antisocial behaviour spots, as mentioned previously tonight. 
this could be a flagship development in terms of positive local consultation engagement and the regeneration of a small site to provide much needed affordable homes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bedard. Right. Um, I'd like to bring uh, Peter back in just to see if he's got any uh, comments on the speakers, please. Yeah, it's, um, thank you, Chair. Um, in points that the um, the speakers raise, um, I would um, I, I would agree in uh, in in certain elements. Um, there are other um, locally, I suppose, available uh, parts of open space that uh, are within, I suppose, relatively close proximity of the. Uh, of the site, uh, we did. We've sought to replace the um, the green uh, amenity space um, within the development. Um, although, because it was uh, allocated as as a housing site previously, currently um, it's not. But there has been in the past uh, development brief for housing on the whole of this site, including the uh, community garden. Uh, area that's been talked about <coughs> quite a lot to uh, this evening. In terms of the amenities space, it seems that it was closed quite a while ago because of uh, issues of antisocial um, behaviour. Um, Councillor Par uh, Partridge, in her um, in the speaking, asked that the um, if we call it the community garden area. Could be gated off. That would um, resolve some of the um, problems that have been identified with um, uh, antisocial behaviour and access to that um, that area. Um, I would note that it's a shame because we would seek and we have sought to, you know, uh, develop this site in a, in a holistic uh, manner, and that includes reproviding uh, any space, green space that's uh, that may be lost. Um, but it could be um, that the site could be uh, gated if members considered that that was um, appropriate. Uh, there's already a condition on the pre-committee notes that refer to the um, a management plan for the uh, for the uh, open space community garden. And um, that could include uh, or with the addition of a, a reference to gating, it could also uh, include uh, rewilding or wild, you know, wilding and planting to uh, to enhance the ecological value of that um, of that area. Um, there may well be more points that I'll, will be raised. I'll come back on um, when you uh, require me to chair. Thank you. That's great. Thank you, Pete. Uh, so um, yeah. <coughs> Well, for myself, I'm a big believer in uh, listening to the locals and we've got a councillor who's uh, singing from the same hymn sheet. So uh, I'd like to open it up to um, to committee, please. So uh, committee, if there, are there any questions or comments you would like to add to the debate, please? Uh, councillor Neil. Yes, Chair, me again, I'm afraid. Um, I agree with Mr Morris. Uh, some very good points about the opening of the pathway. I think it is going to cause us some trouble, as it has in the past. Um, we've seen that as a problem. And I agree with Councillor Partridge as well. Maybe a gated area is a way of controlling the issues more so. Um, I'm a bit concerned about the parking. Um, I grew up round here, so I know very well that four draft street parking, as you saw from the photos previously, there's more than four cars used that at a time. Um, and it's really paramount for the businesses around there that we try and promote the businesses around there. And I, I do know there is parking farther down Windmill Hill, um, but whether the old age pensioners in the area would want to cross that busy road and walk up the hill to the shops there, I'm not convinced. Um, so I'm, I'm just not convinced. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Uh, Councillor Cowell. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, um, I think first of all, I've got a fairly straightforward question, which is um, there was reference made to the ongoing consultation um, and 
assuming there's no material planning objections raised, um, we delegate it. But I just wondered what would happen if there are some material planning objections. So that was a fairly straightforward question. Um, in terms of the, the development itself, um, again, I am concerned about the parking. Normally, when we, we talk about parking um, not really being a, a, something that we need to be concerned about or something that we can't be concerned about, it's usually sort of informal parking where people are parking in the road or whatever, and it's not directly linked to that development. But here we've actually got uh, what seems to be a car park area. So I'm a bit worried about the fact that that's been substituted with fewer car parking spaces. And also um, the issues around the open space and ASB. Potentially even with a gate, I'm quite concerned because we've got a couple of similar well, areas of open space of varying degrees in my ward, which are closed in. And quite frankly, one of them did have a gate on, but people just climbed over it and started setting fire to it. So that in itself can be an issue. I do have some real concerns about the fact that that open space is closed in. I'd be happier, in a sense, if, if it was the other way around and the houses were more to that direction and the green space was in the front, more sort of with, with surveillance. Um, those are my concerns, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cowell. Uh, I believe there was a question in there. Pete, Pete, would you be able to answer that for us, please? Uh, yes, through you, Chair. Um, a few <clears throat> a few elements in there. Um, I think the first was about um, about if any further objections were uh, received that um, raised new points and weren't uh, material. Um, if it was resolved that the application would be approved, then we would uh, we would uh, either report back through to the chair, um, yourself or, or um, other chair, um, who, if they wished, could uh, report the matter back to um, committee. But usually these things are then uh, discussed between officers and the, and the chair of the committee to um, consider any, any comments that are made. Uh, we think it unlikely that there would be new um, objections raised, you know, raising new grounds that hadn't already been um, considered because currently the the consultation period is just about the um, re um, location of the uh, of the footpaths um, between Highfield Road and uh, Fordraft Street onto the new Stub Road. Um, in terms of the um, the open space, um, we understand that the open space was closed off some 15 years ago um, as a result of uh, antisocial behaviour and I, I believe having spoken to Councillor Partridge about a um, few individuals actually uh, camping on the uh, on the area. Um, having the open space closed um, may well, it would have seemed to have addressed that uh, over time in, in that um, all concerned seem to agree that the uh, antisocial behaviour within the open space has, has ceased. It now appears to take place at the back of the uh, at the back of the shops. Um, so gating it wouldn't necessarily um, cause an issue. I guess it would maintain the, the status quo in a, albeit in a smaller area. Um, there will be, I'll say, a condition that relates to the management. Uh, a management scheme for that open space uh, in any event. And in terms of the um, the parking, uh, parking question, um, yes, the area probably accommodates uh, four, uh, sorry, six vehicles, which is, you know, a lot, potentially a loss of, of two at uh, its full capacity. Um, the four spaces provided within the scheme are usable. Um, there's a good number of, um, of parking spaces on Windmill Hill within the car park. That's fully available uh, and provides probably a more uh, secure um, parking proposition. Um, there are also um, pedestrian crossing points on Windmill Hill that do um, give safe access at points uh, from one side of the road to, uh, to the other. Um, you know, we 
have, I think, tried as hard as we can to reprovide parking spaces, but we're also, um, I suppose, in conjunction with um, uh, with housing needs, trying to provide um, houses on previously developed sites uh, and sites within the urban area. And this goes a good way towards uh, addressing that provision, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Uh, I'd like to bring in uh, Councillor Kesey, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, hands up, it's not an area of the borough that I am overly familiar with. Uh, I've got to make one comment though before I comment on this um, particular application. Over mature trees. Now, that will be a very interesting one to many residents in my area who are blighted by the things over mature. Maybe we'll use that word more. Anyway, on this particular scheme, the one thing that troubles me is I understand that we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. We need more housing, but we also mustn't lose any small green space that we've got. And looking at this site, I can appreciate one part of it, um, which is the, the area with lots of trees. Um, but the, the, the area opposite in between, is it Highfield Road and Fordraft Street, where there's that patch of green land? I think this would be a real waste of just a small area of green land because yes I understand that there is a park fairly nearby but these small areas are usually adjacent to residential properties it's somewhere where kids can go and go and play where parents uh, can keep an eye on them uh, I'm not sure a park even if it's two three hundred meters away uh, would fulfill that need you know we, we're talking about today's society and it's a really sad indictment of that society when a planning application isn't based on the quality of the uh, proposal um, or the area, but it's based on what could happen uh, because of antisocial behaviour, a real, real shame. I, I agree with uh, Councillor Cal's comment. I can't personally understand why the whole development can't use the area which is covered in trees. There seems to be plenty of land there. Um, so, yes, that's my reservation. I'm kind of supportive, uh, but I really wouldn't want to see, uh, you know, a, a, even a small area of flat grass accessible space lost to the community. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Keyes here. Yeah, I, I must admit I'm looking down them lines as well. Uh, Councillor Neath. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I have listened to everybody. Um, I think there's there's a my view would be that there's a number of things that have come out of all this. Um, you know, mentioned protecting green spaces, trees. Um, I'm familiar with the area, by the way, uh, so much of it anyway. Uh, we mentioned parking, gated air paths, you know, open green space, anti-social behaviour. And, and we're still in a process where uh, there the, there are the parts of the consultations, if if I stand it, understand this right, which is still waiting for uh, uh, results of of, of that. Um, my view would be that the, that if committee agrees that we go and have a look at this as a site visit and sort of really determine exactly what is what and pick up each point and address it through a site visit. Um, however, we, you know, I do know that we need houses, and, um, but once they're built, you know, we're not going to demolish them, are we? So I think it, we need to be very careful um, and, and look at all these points that have been raised uh, or issues, if you like, and be addressed through a site visit and bring it back to a committee. So I don't know what the committee thinks on that. That's my view, Chair. Thank, thank you, Councillor Neath. Um, the, the one thing I'm mindful with a, a site visit uh, on this one is the fact that uh, we have elections next week and it may not be the same sitting um, uh, committee. Uh, I'm not sure how that one works. Um, could I ask, uh, uh, is, is Gail with us? Sorry, yes, I just sorry, I just had a problem with my microphone. Yes, I'm with I am with you. Um, uh, maybe I can ask Karen as well. But presumably, could we invite if if councillors 
are they able to come back into the new committee if, if they've sort of started the process tonight if they've been at this meeting and been on a site visit are they able to come back um they could substitute any new members if that helps gail but the, even though the substitutes won't have been oh you mean they come in place yeah. of new members okay yes well that makes sense because what, what i was getting at is you need somebody who you need people like like tonight we've had only three people that could vote on one of the applications because only three could do the whole process if if it's the case then that um any new councillors are prepared to just step down for that one applicate that, that one sort of item on the agenda then then, then that would solve the problem Chair, sorry, can I make a point, please? There was a site yeah. visit agreed. There was a site visit agreed for today, um, for, for for the first matter that we considered, and only three councillors from the entire committee turned up. I think for a site visit to be a valid and representative, it needs the entire committee to be there. I just wanted to make that point. Okay, thank thank you, Councillor Casey. Pete, did you want to say say something? Uh, yes. Chair, if, if, if I may, um, on the basis that this is a, a complicated site, we do have some uh, video, additional video um, footage of the uh, of the site, and um, John um, is, I guess, in the wings, wait, uh, waiting with a three-dimensional view. Um, if that helps, um, I mean, members would have to give. Um, was a, a good reason for the for any any site visit but perhaps um if we show additional uh, visual material first that may help uh yes please okay thank you chair um so right just just Bear with me. Um, right. Oh, excuse me, Chair. I'm, I'm struggling with the um, to share the video at this point. It's, um... Peter, would it benefit if I did the Google Street View and aerial shots first while you? I think it would. Sort uh, out the it video? would assist. No, I was just trying to make that request. Cheers. Thanks. Uh, hopefully, um, people can now see my screen with the uh, the Google um, aerial shot of the site. Yeah. I think John, it'd be useful. Could if you can point out with your cursor the the application site where the car parking is, uh, just to the to the north of that. Uh, so that's that area there, and then the area of uh, public parking. Um, fronting the Methodist Church, uh, just down Windmill Hill. Um, that's that area there, um, members. So there's a, a number of spaces available on that site um, that could be utilised by as you know, as an alternative to this um, rather uh, remote and uh, and and limited um, limited area. Um, in terms of the um, alternative areas of 
of open space. If you could maybe move this view to the uh, to the east um, and show the Bernard Oakley Memorial Gardens. Um, if I zoom out slightly. That's right. So those gardens are um, it's the, the, the large area of, of grass uh, you can see towards the that's it towards the right of the screen, and you can see the application green space um, towards the left. Okay, um, I think if um, you can show the application site in a in a kind of three D uh, view, looking um, from the footpath to the north of the um, possible communal garden, uh, communal garden, looking towards the site. Yeah. Okay. So that's giving the context of the, um, the grass area you will have seen the early, um, proposition you see uh, zebra crossing on windmill hill just to the right of the uh, of the slide that would give um, access from one side of the uh, of the carriageway to the other and yeah looking um, south uh, across the uh, the area of the closed open space. There's a footpath that runs directly um, adjacent to that um, that open space and links to uh, Talbot Street, the, um, the the street you can see on the left of this uh, this slide. Okay. Um, other visuals you can see the uh, parking area at the rear of the existing uh, shops on Windmill Hill that. And that's also an additional area of, of private parking uh, attached to the public house, the round of uh, the round of beef. But generally, you can see the area um, behind the shops that has parking for those uh, for those premises. Um, it may well be um, that some of those premises do utilise the parking um, that's shown off for Draft Street. Um, it, it may not be, but I'll say the alternative parking areas within um, relatively um, you know, accessible proximity of this uh, of this site. I hope that um, that helps, Chair. Yes, thank you, Pete. Thank you, John. Uh, I'd like to just bring uh, Councillor Neef back in, please. Um, Councillor Neef, does, does that um, does that suffice? Are you happy with that, or are you still thinking? that we should put it to a vote for a site visit? I think we should put it to a vote. Um, going back to what you were saying about the committee makeup, I think what you look at is those of us that are already on. Uh, I don't think most, I think majority of us are not up for elections, but however, you are right that we could, the makeup could change because of the change in the year. Um, I mean, personally, I think we sh we should still go for a visit, yeah. even though we've seen it, you know, seen it this way. But okay. I don't know what, what the committee thinks, actually. Right. No, no. Well, that's where I'll, 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 I'll you, you can to, go to a vote. If I'll you put want. it to a vote in a little while then. Um, uh, could I bring in Councillor Taylor, please? Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Um, looking at the, this is a better view that, that you've just put on there now. And there seems to be two really main issues. The, uh, one is the, the car parking that is um, generally in use now and they're going to be losing. And the other one is the pathway and the open space at the uh, rear of the, the, the new build. This space now, it's already looked on that photograph that you just put up there, that there was already a pathway there. Is there antisocial behaviour happening now? in its present condition? Uh, that's the first question that I want to ask. And the second one is, um, will you clarify that that is already a pathway and it is in use? 
at this point in time? First of all, please. OK, through through you, Chair, um, there is no pathway through the open space um, currently. There is a public footpath that runs directly to the, the north of that, um, that open space, but the open space does have a, um, a mesh fence um, that closes it off from that uh, from that pathway. OK, so um, in terms of the um, the other. Um, sorry, I forgot. What the other, there was yeah. anti, is there any anti oh, behavior? Oh, right, yeah. Sorry, uh, yeah. Well, at uh, this point in time so in that area there, in the area where the circles are. Uh, that space is actually closed off at the moment, so I, I believe that when the public speakers and councillors uh, were commenting on um, antisocial behaviour, it's occurring either on the footpath or it's occurring at the uh, at the rear of the uh, of the shops um, on, on Windmill Hill. Um, I don't believe it's actually occurring within the area of open space we're talking about because it is it is in fact closed off. Can I come back in chair, please? Yeah, of course. Yeah, as he said, it really concerns me this this open space area. So at the present time, it's all fenced off. So it has no use at all. You know, none of this space at the moment, it has no use at all because it's not accessible. It's all fenced off. So Correct. once it was, if and when, if it was built on and there was just a portion of it left, um, to what use could that be? You, you're talking about putting a pathway through it and then that opens it up and it will be open then for any antisocial behaviour. If you don't put a pathway there, then it will just be fenced off as it is now. Is that not what the, not what you're saying? Or what's being proposed? Uh, from the planning authority's perspective, uh, we sought to access, uh, give access to that, uh, that open space by um, giving it good pedestrian access. It has more, um, more people visiting, it gives better um, kind of surveillance and it does tend to deter antisocial um, activity. There was also a proposal as a condition requiring if it's opened up that street lighting is provided. Um, there's specifically no objection from the, uh, the police either in terms of the, uh, the proposals that you have uh, in front of you. Um, if that helps, Councillor. But what the objectors are saying is, once this is opened out, it is leaving it open then for antisocial behaviour, which has happened in the past. Is that what I'm? Is that what they're saying? Yes. That's what they're saying. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, there's and also that, that is a fact that it's once it's opened out yeah. and it's not fenced off. Uh, yeah, I can see that that could. Uh, could be an issue. OK, yeah, then, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, there's been a, a, sorry, Chair, there's also been the suggestion that from the uh, from the councillor who spoke that the um, the footpath, if it were to be gated, um, it would uh, negate um, potential use of that open space for antisocial behaviour. And that could be considered as part of um, part of deliberations. Okay, yeah. thank you, Jen. Right, thank okay. you. Uh, can I bring in Councillor Neil, please? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, a couple of points. Um, the last site visit was actually called for by me, and I believe site visits are really useful. However, as my colleague Councillor Kesey has already said, only two permanent members on this committee actually turned up, so it's a bit, a bit daft really calling for a, a site visit. It's very undemocratic if enough people don't turn up. So, yes, I'm a fan of them, but only if members actually wish to turn up who have their say, because as you know, if they don't turn up, they can't have their say. That's the first point. My second point is, again, I'm still concerned about lack of parking. I know there's parking down at the Methodist Church, but it is a long way away for people who want to pop to shops. And as you know, one of our policies is not destroying green spaces 
So the area between Highfield Road and Fordraff Street is a green space that is used at the moment. If you go there, you'll see people using it. So if we get rid of that, that goes against my policies and my beliefs. Thank you, Chair. Right, so Councillor Neil, thank you. Uh, I'm going to put it to the vote for the site visit. Um, I'll go through everyone one at a time. Chair, yes. Can I oh, just 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 to come in, Chair, just to seek okay. clarity from from Kim, just to confirm that um, if you do go down the route of a site visit, the the existing committee members today would have to attend the site visit and then yeah. come back to attend the uh, the committee meeting in in June, if that's the case. Yes. Yes, that's right, Paul. Yeah. Or we could still substitute. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Or we could no. Have no. no. Couldn't substitute. Okay. I think Councillor Taylor was meaning if she wasn't on the committee after the election, she could still substitute to come on that. No, I mean, if I didn't want to do a side visit, I could substitute someone to do a side visit in my no. life. No. no, no. OK, then. No. That's what I wanted to clarify. Right, so. OK, then, moving on. Um, Clarification, if you don't mind. What about if you are up for election um, and so, yeah. was agreed, then what happens in those circumstances? Passive, by the way, sorry. Uh, uh, through, through you, Chair, if I, if I may, and, and sorry, Paul, if I'm in, uh, interrupting. Uh, members have to be involved in the whole of the uh, the process. So at the next committee, um, only members, if there's uh, if they're up for election, um, it's only members that have been subject to listening to the public speaking, hearing the presentation. Um, would be able to um, to to undertake the site visit and deliberate on the application um, at the next committee, which would be uh, early June. Right. Okay. okay. Now I am going to go to the vote. Um, we don't know the result of the the vote yet, so we, you know. Uh, so first off, oh, do we want a site visit, Councillor Ahmed? <laughs> Oh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Oh, yeah. Generally, since I've been on the committee, they, they have been very well attended. We've had the very rare circumstances where they haven't, uh, such as today. So um, and because there has been some uncertainty, no one, none of the councillors who have spoken have said either way. There have been some doubts. So on that basis, I would vote for a site visit chair. Thank you. OK, thank you. Councillor Burstyn. I'm happy to judge it as it stands now, Chairman. Right. <clears throat> Councillor Cowell. I'm not sure a site visit's practical, to be honest, so I'd say no to that. OK. Councillor Anif. Uh, yeah, I would still go for a site visit. And re regarding site visit today, it was very much my own fault of uh, putting in the wrong uh, postal code, which took me to, uh, to a different area. So I wouldn't have made it to yours. Right. So, OK. OK. Uh, Councillor Harley. Sorry, I can't hear you, Councillor Harley. Chair, could she use the? Uh, could Councillor Harley use the text box if she's unable to? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Use the uh, I couldn't hear you, Councillor Harley. So if you could text it to us on the uh, on the on the the chat, uh, Councillor Neil. Yes, Chair, as you know, I'd vote yes. Um, I, I always think site visits are very beneficial. Councillor Taylor. Um, no, I wouldn't. I, I don't want to vote for the site visit. I would be happy to go along um, and vote on this at this meeting. Thank you. Councillor Casey. Thank you, Chair. No, I'm against a site visit. And if I could propose that uh, this site needs to be either voted on today or either because of the election postponed for a future DC meeting. Thank you, Chair. Right. Uh, thank you. It's just Councillor Harley's um, vote that we need. For you, Chair, Councillor Harley's um, no, no, commented not, not to vote for a, a site visit. 
Right, fair enough. That's great. Okay, so it will be decided tonight. Um, right, so are there any more comments or questions from committee? Councillor Keesey, is that an, an old hand or? Yeah. Councillor Ahmed. No. As there don't seem to be any more hands raised. We will go to the decision. All right. This is planning application number P twenty one four seven O. Erection of one bungalow and ten dwelling houses associated with highway works and parking is to approve or refuse. Councillor Ahmed. Approved, Chair. Councillor Burston. Approved, Chairman. Councillor Cowell. I'll refuse it, Chair. Councillor Annie. Okay. Councillor Neve. I think based on this, I would refuse it. Councillor Harley. Approved, Chair. Councillor Neil. It's refused, Chair, to me. Councillor Taylor. Yes, I would refuse until we got some more clarification on the this green space there. Councillor Kesey. Uh, thank you, Chair. Based on the comments I made, I made earlier on the site as it is now, I will refuse. Thank you. Right. OK. Well, as it stands, that application is refused. I can see that the housing team have worked very well on this. Uh, it just needs a little bit more work, I think. Can we have reasons for refusal, please? Uh, reasons for refusal, Committee? Uh, you have spoke about car parking, so um, that, that it's a very tight lane. Highway safety. Uh, Councillor Cowell. I would say on the grounds of residential amenity, because I'm still concerned about the, the, the impact on the open space and its position. Uh, Councillor Neil. Thank you. It's the, still the parking of the shops, chair, and the green spaces that we're going to be losing. It's amenity, yeah. Councillor Casey. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, it's the loss of the uh, the grass area between the two roads. Uh, so uh, loss of great green space amenity. Yep. Thank you, Chair. No problem. Right. So that the application has been refused. Moving on. Planning application number P nineteen. 1369. Um, this one is an outline application for residential development. So we are looking at the access tonight up to 93 dwellings. Um, Peter, would you like to come in, please? Okay, um, Chair, thank you. Um, this uh, application site, we can look at the, um, the first um, slide, please. Um, it's a vacant industrial site. It's been <clears throat> vacant for uh, a, a, a period of three or four at least years now. Um, located um, within um, a mixed use area, residential um, to the north of the site, as you were looking at it, um, commercial, industrial um, to the east and to the south of the site. Uh, it also um, overlooks uh, part of the Dudley Canal, and there's um, a, a canal arm that uh, runs directly uh, adjacent to the uh, to the site. Um, you'll you'll see um, there's also uh, links or in close proximity of uh, of bridges over the canal um, into the uh, local um, the local area. The um, the next. Uh, slide, please. 
Okay. Um, this indicates a master plan for the uh, development of the uh, of the site. During the um, the process of the uh, of the application, additional land um, that was in the ownership of the council has uh, been agreed to be uh, subsumed within the application site to enable um, a an appropriate access uh, road road width to be provided to provide a perimeter block development of uh, of houses and apartments that can give a safe and secure uh, development overlooking the uh, the canal side uh, it does away with the need for retaining walls that would have um, remained from buildings uh, industrial buildings on the uh, on the site uh, and it allows the grading of land um, up to uh, open space um, at, the, uh, at the the north of the uh, the site as you uh, as you see it. Um, within the um, time frame of the developments, we've also uh, got appropriate mitigation uh, measures for noise emanating from uh, one of the uh, industrial users uh, uh, fronting uh, Marriott Road. Uh, that would be a, ca a case of a dual use of, um, of acoustic barriers and uh, using the um, apartment block you can see in uh, in purple as a as a screen block um, with limited habitable accommodation facing the uh, the employment uses um, we're uh, clear from a, an environmental uh, safety and health perspective that the mitigation is is appropriate and that the residential development won't have an adverse impact upon uh, surrounding employment uses. There's no objections from um, the uh, surrounding employment uses to this um, to this development. There is uh, open space to be provided within the uh, within the site, uh, and that will also give the uh, potential for um, appropriate sustainable drainage um, on the site. Uh, there's the potential to form uh, appropriate links to existing footways and diversion of a footway that runs to the um, if, uh, on this slide it would run to the north of the site to uh, accommodate that within the um, the spine road of the development which is shown to uh, be accessed from approximately the same um, access points as the uh, as the industry uh, was formerly. Uh, in principle, um, the applicants have shown that the uh, industrial um, buildings aren't capable of, of um, I suppose, beneficial use, um, given the age of those uh, of those premises in a period of marketing, uh, showed that there was no interest in reuse of the uh, of the site for uh, continued uh, employment purposes. Um, if we go to some of the other slides, uh, if we if we may. Um, so this shows the um, developments. You can see it's actually to the northwest, where an existing access road um, gave emergency access to the site. Um, it's at the top of a quite a steep embankment that, uh, by being subsumed within. The application site will allow uh, land to be graded down um, gently into the site. That means you know, retaining walls don't need to be maintained uh, along that frontage. And presence of retaining walls would also um, give a safety uh, issue um, by uh, potentially people um, toppling over the top if they uh, utilise the open space. Um, there's links to adopted um, public footpaths to Orbridge Road. The site can appropriately and um, link to um, the adjacent uh, cul-de-sac and to the bridge over the uh, over the canal, giving sustainable links to the, um, the surrounding uh, areas. Uh, in terms of <clears throat> uh, section 106 obligations, um, there can be um, some 
contribution towards um, local educational need, the applications being the subject of a viability assessment. Uh, viability is limited by the uh, amount of, um, of demolition and um, site preparation that would be uh, required. There'll also be um, the provision for uh, calming measures on Marriott Road, which does actually have relatively um, high uh, 85th percentile speed. Um, calming measures would reduce that. And also uh, there would be proposition uh, proposals for improved uh, visibility at the junction with uh, with Cradley Road. Um, there's the ability there to bring out the um, junction markings to give better uh, visibility both left and right onto uh, onto Cradley Road. Um, so from a, a, a highway safety uh, perspective that's uh, supported by the um, by the uh, highway engineers. Uh, because of the amount of vacant floor space within the development, that will um, total up uh, against affordable housing uh, provision um, as given by government. Therefore, uh, the, the development can't uh, accommodate affordable housing, um, notwithstanding that other planning obligations are, um, are addressed. Um, in terms of um, ecology, uh, we have potential for open space that can uh, give enhancements, as you've seen on the uh, on the master plan within the site. Uh, there is an identified badger set um, that would need to be um, relocated by licence uh, from uh, Natural England. Um, part of the process for starting that um, that measure would be the grant of uh, planning approval in the public interest and um, housing provision on a brownfield site within an urban area is within the uh, the public interest. So there's not an issue in uh, taking an outline uh, approval forward on that uh, on that basis. Um, so I guess overall, a sustainable development, reuse of uh, a brownfield site for uh, residential purposes um, with the recommendation for uh, for approval chair and just to note there are um, there are some comments um, on the uh, pre-committee uh, notes referring to three additional ob objections which are uh, addressed in that same note okay thank you chair thank you Pete right uh, there are no speakers on this uh, application committee so uh... I'll open it up to any members who wish to comment or ask a question. I, will, I would like to say after um, having such a complicated application just recently, this one isn't quite so uh, right. I believe uh, Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this lies um, on the border of my uh, ward and is something that we've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, residents who live around this uh, factory site have long um, wanted um, this to be re redeveloped. The noise from the factory used to be, uh, I could hear it where I lived, where I live in Northfield Road. So, you know, um, it's, a, a, it's a welcome use to this site. There are some things that need to be um, looked at in, in greater detail, um, as in um, the, uh, the main access being off uh, Maria Road, but it, they have been addressed slightly tonight by um, saying that we're going to put some traffic calm in there because this is quite a fast road uh, and it will need uh, looking at in that aspect. The, the pulling out, again, that was uh, raised just pulling out of Maria Road uh, because there's going to be this much extra um, traffic coming off this these 93 homes so you know yeah. that that again is something that is a condition that needs to be uh, made we, we need to make sure that we look at that uh, but on the whole we welcome this um redevelopment yes thank you no problem thank you uh pete would you just um just just re-educate what you said about the uh the the the, the roads and uh, the, the the infrastructure of it how are we going to um, enhance it or Yes, please. Um, yeah, uh, Chair, the, uh, the site access is, is pretty much in the place where uh, 
the existing industrial access is is lo located. Uh, it's just because Marriott Road is quite straight in that uh, in that vicinity. Um, the applicants have agreed to provide um, a, a sum of money to accommodate traffic calming along that stretch of Marriott Road, mm -hmm. and also to improve the visibility at the junction with, um, yeah. with Cradley Road. Um, at the it's moment, there's a, a bad wall. junction. Yeah, th there's a wall there that does limit visibility to to the right, but um, because it's the configuration of the junction. The stop lines can be brought out and reconfigured to give much improved visibility to uh, both directions. Uh, so it will become a safe junction as part of this uh, development as well. OK, thank you. Okay. I'll that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Neil. Yes, Chair, really just to reiterate really what Councillor Taylor said, um, I think this is a great use of a Brownfield site, exactly what we'd like to happen. And the residents surrounding it are all for it, which is good, as again, I say, it's good use for Brownfield sites to change the site from what isn't being used at the moment. Hazel, I think it's a brilliant idea. Thank you, Councillor Neil. I understand it hasn't been used for quite some time. Uh, Councillor Neath. Um, just for clarification, if I could just ask Peter, um, it, it, I see the whole row of units. Okay, they're all they will be all go, gone. But there's a there's a section on the right hand side, isn't it, where it says Maple Works? If I is will that that's part of it, isn't it? That's all I want to know. Um, through you, Chair, uh, Maple Works is outside of the site. Um, there's a step down to other industrial premises um, and uh, the uh, are located off um, Marriott Road, set at a lower level. And that's um, why we've actually incorporated noise mitigation measures uh, requirements on the uh, on the master plan. Um, I mean, otherwise, there's users such as um, Beach Steel, again, located at a lower level, but um, from those premises, it's only really uh, vehicles that could cause any uh, any disturbance, and that there's appropriate provision in place for for mitigation of those use of those uses. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, that's fine. That I'm happy with that. Thanks. Apologies. Um... Forgot to unmute. Uh, Pete, could I just ask, will this application come back to the Development Control Committee in the future, or is it um, should it be approved tonight? Uh, no, it's uh, if it's approved, um, it will be by um, committee um, deliberation. Okay. A few, there will be a future reserve matters uh, application, um, yeah. but by reference to the uh, the master plan that uh, you've seen. It, it's clear to officers that the site can be appropriately developed, yes. um, you know, in a form of um, with with residential properties. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, Pete. Uh, are there any more questions or comments from committee? No. Well, I will go to the vote. This is application P nineteen. 1369 Marriott Road for 93 dwellings and it is to approve or refuse. Councillor Ahmed. Approved, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Burston. Approve. Councillor Cowell. Approved, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Neef. Uh, approved, Chair. Councillor Hardy. <coughs> Approved, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Neil. Also approved, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Approved, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Kesey. Approved. Thank you. That's unanimous. So that application has been approved. Right, moving on. To consider any questions from members to the chair where two clear days notice has been given to the monitoring officer. There are none, chair. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Right. Well, thank you very much, committee, and uh, I hope to see you all soon.
Thank you. That's the end of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Have fun. Thank you, Chair. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>